Hi everyone, this is Mavic Pa, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to go through the discussion involving structural isomerism. Now structural isomers have the same molecular formula. So basically they have the same number of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, but they have different structural formulas. So essentially they are different compounds. So it is like two different persons. They have the same weight. So maybe both of them weigh 60 kilograms, but the first person weighing 60 kilograms is tall and skinny. The second person weighing 60 kilograms is short and fat. So obviously they are different people. It is just that they have the same mass. So structural isomers, it is along this line. They happen to have the same molecular formula. So the molar mass is the same, but they are actually very different compounds because the structural formula is different. So because of that, structural isomers are expected to have different physical properties as well as different chemical properties. Now we have three different types of structural isomerism. So we will go through them part by part. The first type of structural isomerism will be chain isomerism. The second type is positional isomerism. And finally, the third type for structural isomerism will be function group isomerism. Now let's look at the first type of structural isomerism, which is chain isomerism. Chain isomers, essentially, they have the same number of carbon, but the way the carbon chain is arranged is different. So we will use alkene as an example. So let's say I have an alkene with the molecular formula C5H12. So how many different chain isomers can I draw based on this molecular formula? So the first chain isomer that I can get out of this guy, obviously, will be a straight chain, 5 carbon. So 1 carbon, 2 carbon, carbon number 3, carbon number 4, carbon number 5. If we put in the hydrogen, I'll have 3 hydrogen here. So this is uh, 2 hydrogen on this carbon, another 2 hydrogen on this carbon, another 2 hydrogen on this carbon, and finally a 3 hydrogen on this carbon. So essentially, the total number of hydrogen I'll get will be 12 hydrogen. So this is 3 hydrogen, number 4, number 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is C5H12. So this is the first chain isomer where the longest possible carbon chain is n equals to 5. So I can put down n equals to 5 here. Then this compound will be called a pentane. So I can also put down the name here. 5 carbon straight chain is essentially just a pentane. Now, how about another chain isomer that I can draw with molecular formula C5H12? I can also draw the longest possible carbon chain is n equals to 4. Then I have a methyl group attached to the second carbon, I can have a CH3 here. If I fill in the hydrogen for the rest of the carbon, then this is a CH3. This carbon number 2 has one hydrogen. This is a CH2. Finally, this is our methyl group. Now this is also C5H12. But you notice the longest carbon chain is now N equals to 4. This is N equals to 4. And this is carbon number 2 and I have a methyl group sticking out of carbon number 2. So the name for this compound will be a 2-methyl butane. Now we can actually draw one more chain isomer where the longest possible carbon chain is n equals to 3. So if it is n equals to 3, then I have two methyl groups on carbon 2. Then this will also be a chain isomer. If I fill in the hydrogen, CH3, CH3, CH3. And finally, this first carbon is also a methyl group. The longest possible carbon chain will be n equals to 3. So the name for this compound will be 2,2-dimethylpropane. Now you notice these three different compounds, they are obviously different, they have different structural formulas, they have different names, but they happen to have the same number of carbon and hydrogen. And because the difference in them is based on how the carbon is branched, so they are considered as chain isomers. Now the second type of structural isomerism is positional isomerism. Positional isomerism essentially is I have the same functional group, but the functional group is on a different carbon. So then let's use a very simple example involving chloropropane. Now chloropropane, that means I can have a 3 carbon, which is a propane. And if I want to put in a chloro group, essentially there are two ways for me to put the chloro group. If I put the Cl to the first carbon and I fill in the rest of the bonds with a hydrogen, then the name for this compound will be a 1-chloropropane. So this guy is essentially 1-chloropropane because the Cl is attached to the first carbon. Now, of course, there's another way for me to draw a chloropropane is where the Cl is on the second carbon. So if I fill in the rest of the hydrogen, this is a hydrogen, this will be a CH3, then this will also be a CH3. 
Then this guy, the name for this compound will be a 2-chloropropane. Right, so this guy will be 2-chloropropane. So you notice both these compounds are our chloropropane, but you notice the Cl is attached to a different carbon. This Cl is attached to the first carbon, while the other Cl is attached to the second carbon, because essentially they have the same functional group, but the functional group is on a different carbon, so they are considered as positional isomers. Now the third type of structural isomerism will be our functional group isomerism. Functional group isomers essentially are compounds with the same molecular formula, but they have different functional groups. So maybe if we use an example involving this molecular formula C6H12, now there are two ways for us to draw C6H12 with different functional group. The first one will be a straight chain alkene, so which looks something like this. I can have a C double bond C, then I can have a third carbon, carbon number four, carbon number five, carbon number six. If I fill in the hydrogen, so I have two hydrogen on the first carbon, one hydrogen on the second carbon, then this will be a CH2, this is a CH2, this is a CH2, and the last carbon will be a CH3. So you notice the total number of hydrogens that we have, two hydrogen, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the molecular formula for this alkene is C6H12. And how do we name this guy? Because the longest carbon chain is six carbon. And I have an alkene, which is between carbons one and two. This is our hex one in. So essentially we have a six carbon alkene. The double bond is between carbons number one and carbon number two. Now there's another way for us to draw C6H12, which is our cyclohexane, a cycloalkane. So if I put in the cyclohexane, so this is our cyclohexane. Each of this corner will represent a CH2, and the formula for this guy essentially will be C6H12. So let me put in the name. All right, so this guy is cyclohexane. You notice both of these compounds, they have the same molecular formula, C6H12, but one is an alkane, the other is an alkene. And because they have different functional groups, so these two compounds are considered as functional group isomers. All right, so that was the discussion involving structural isomerism. Remember, we have three different types of structural isomerism, chain isomerism, positional isomerism, and functional group isomerism. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.